بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, Brothers and sisters in Islam I will start off our talk on the fall of Andalus by quoting to you what many of the historians and how they have described how pitiful was the state of Andalus how pitiful was the state of the world when Andalus fell and I'll quote to you what this man Stanley Lane Poole uh, he writes in the Moors in Spain and he is actually a very uh, non-biased uh, writer and so if you want to go back to his book this is actually quite a fine non-biased book and that is Stan- Stanley uh, Lane Poole's the, the Moors in Spain he writes with, with Granada fell all Spain's greatness for a brief while indeed the reflection of the Moorish splendor cast a borrowed light upon the history of the land which it which it had once warmed with its sunny radiance. The great epoch of, of Isabella, Charles V, and Philip II of Columbus, Cortes, and Pizarro shed a last uh, halo about the dying monuments of a mighty state. When followed the, uh, the abomination of dissolution, the rule of inquisition, and the blackness of darkness in which Spain has been plunged ever since. In the land where science was once supreme, the Spanish doctors became noted for nothing but their ignorance and incapacity. The arts of Toledo and Almeria uh, 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 faded into insignificance. The land deprived of skillful irrigation of the Moors grew impoverished and neglected. The richest and the most fertile valleys languished and were deserted, and most of the populous cities which had filled every district in Andalusia fell into ruinous decay and beggars, Freyers and bandits took the place of scholars, merchants and knights. So low fell Spain when she had driven away the Moors. Such is the melancholy of the contrast offered by her history. And also uh, 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 Prescott writes as well in his Philip the Two of Spain, he writes, The Arabs suddenly appeared in Spain like a star which crosses through the air with its lights, uh, spreads its flame on the horizon and then vanishes rapidly into naught. They appeared in Spain to fill her suddenly with their activity and the fruit of their genius and endowed her with a glorious glamour which, which enveloped her from the Pyrenees to Gibraltar and from the oceans to the Barcelona. But a, barni, but a burning love for liberty and independence, a fickle character, dispose of frivolity and merriness, neglect of all virtues, an unfortunate disposition of revolution, provoked always by an inflamed imagination, Violent passions and ambitions, a spirit to dominate and other factors of decay worked in the course of time to, to demolish this great edifice raised by men like Tariq, Abdurrahman al-Nasr, Muhammad ibn al-Ahmar and led the Arabs to internal dissension which sapped their power and pushed them away to the abysses of Nod. Millions of Moors quitted Spain carrying their property and arts. The patrimony of a, Spain, of a state, what have the Spaniards creating their place. We could say nothing but an eternal sorrow fills this land in which the gayest natures breath before. Indeed, there are some ruined monuments which still look like these gloomy districts, but a real cry resounds from the depths of these monuments and ruins. Honor and glory to the conquered more and decay and misery to the victorious Spaniard. Subhanallah. As well, uh, uh, Kamen, Mr. K- uh, Dr. Kamen, he writes in the in Spanish Inquisition, as a result of his cardinal Zimin's uh, coercive end- uh, endeavors, it is reported that on the 18th December 1499, about 3,000 Moors were baptized by him, and a leading mosque in Granada was converted into a church. Converts were encouraged to, to surrender their Islamic books, several thousand of which were destroyed by Zimin's in a public bonfire. A few rare books of medicine were kept aside for the University, university of Alcala. Uh, Zemins claimed the Moors had forfeited all their rights under the terms of, of uh, Granada. They should therefore be given the choice between baptism and expulsion. At Andarax, the principal mosque in which the women and children had taken refuge was blown up with gunpowder. All books in Arabic, especially the Quran, were collected to be burnt. Cardinal Zemins was reported during his conversion campaign during, amongst the Granada Moors. Uh, in 1500 to have burned in the public square of Virambra over, over 1,005,000 volumes including unique works of Moorish culture Subhanallah. and these are books which the scholars have written over centuries being burnt in front of our eyes and this is how Subhanallah, uh, uh, Spain had, had, had uh, been destroyed after the coming of the Christians 
Brothers and sisters in Islam, what was the reason for the downfall of Spain? What was the reason for the downfall of Spain? The reason for the downfall of Muslims in Spain was of course for a number of reasons. The first of which was that in the people there was true lack of iman. People had become fascinated with beauty, with this worldly life, and they were into luxury in a way that you just cannot even describe. They were into luxury more than we, we are into luxury, subhanAllah. They were into big palaces, they were the leaders of the world, and so they had this pride in their heart, and they were into luxury like you cannot describe. They used to write poems about how beautiful the, the, the Spaniard women were at that time, about, about red, uh, uh, red hair and green eyes. And this is what filled the, their books, uh, their, them fantasizing about beautiful women. And this is, subhanAllah, a sign of how they were so taken away from, from, from the women of this world, uh, taken away from the women of the hereafter to the women of this world, subhanAllah. Truly, the uh, level of iman in their hearts had truly de- declined. No more was, was a prayer a, a, a means of, 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 of peace, attaining peace. Rather, rather, the prayer was a burden upon them. It was a cultural practice that they were doing. No more was gaining Islamic knowledge a obligation. Rather, it was a, a, it was what the philosophers would at, at that time in Andalus would call a waste of time. A waste of time because true true knowledge was the knowledge of philosophy that the philosophers were were uh, uh, philosophizing at that time. Also, of course, brothers and sisters in Islam, it was truly the fact that there was a lot of cowards in that in in, in Andalus. Many of the kings of Andalus were true cowards. They were just cowardice and there is no other word that you can use to describe them. They were, they, they were in, the, in the face of danger they would leave. In the face of danger they would give up their empire. In the face of danger they would just make pacts with the, with the Christians. And the Christians were completely treacherous in the way that they would look after their, their pacts. And so people were cowards, were true cowards. On top of that brothers and sisters in Islam, people were traitors as well to Muslims. A Muslim would help a disbeliever over his Muslim brother. Something which the ulama of Islam have complete consensus uh, that it is complete kufr. To help, your Muslim, to, to help a disbeliever over a Muslim, over a Muslim uh, uh, and, and to take over the lands and to rape the women and, for, and to help the disbelievers to take Muslim women as, as, their, as their concubines and slaves. It's unbelievable. You know, this is all what happened in, in, in Spain. It is truly a tragic, a tragic history, a, a, a journey into a, a very, very tragic history. How these traitors, these Muslim uh, rulers at that time, were such traitors of Muslimin that they, that they would actually help Christians, the Crusaders, who they knew were treacherous to their packs, who, who they would, who knew, who they knew would automatically break their, break their, their, their packs. All why? Because they just couldn't be bothered trying to, to, to fight them. They just couldn't be bothered. They would rather let the, the disbelievers fight their, their brothers and help them with, with whatever uh, they, they required and because there was so much into, into the dunya. As we will come to subhanAllah, one of the greatest uh, and the, uh, one of the most treacherous rulers of Spain was Ibn al-Ahmar. And, and let us take the history of Spain from 250 years before its fall and we will see how all of these things uh, that I have mentioned to you are described in the history of Spain. I will, I will start off with, uh, uh, with 643 after Hijrah. That is approximately 255 years before the, the fall of Spain. In, in Spain we have different rulers at that time. 643 after Hijrah, Spain has been broken up into different rulers. Muslims are being ruled by different rulers. Garnata has a ruler and, and, and Seville has a ruler and so every major city in, in, over, over there at that time has different rules. Why? Because they just couldn't be together, they couldn't keep, uh, the, the, uh, the, the rulers at that time had too much love for power and so they, broke, so they broke up. So we have this man by the name of Ibn al-Ahmar. Ibn al-Ahmar, this is just a laqab, this is just a title that was put for him, his father was not al-Ahmar. He himself had very red skin. And that's why they used to call him Al Ahmar, Ibn Al Ahmar, the son of the red man. And he himself was a red, who was reddish in color, and he was the ruler of Garnata in the year 643 after Hijra. This man, he made a pact with Fernandez the third, who was the ruler of uh, of uh, of, of uh, Setia Set, 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 at that time. Excuse me, <coughs> Setia at that time. And he made a pact with him upon four things. The ruler of, uh, of Satya at that time, Fernandez III, he made 
a pact with uh, 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 Ibn al-Ahmar upon four things. The first thing was that he would pay jizya to the Christian. <laughs> that the Muslim would pay jizya to who? To the Christian. The second thing he said was that he would not fight him ever. So jihad was forbidden against the Christians. Right? Imagine this. Wallahi, this is how we will be applying them to our current situation as well. Aren't we paying jizya to the disbelievers now? Yes or no, guys? We are, but of course we call it something else. We call it, what do we call it? We call it uh, debt. We call it servicing the debt. We call it, uh, subhanAllah, helping them with the, with the cost of the battles that they fought on our, on our behalf. You know, subhanAllah, but this is jizya, isn't it? At least those Muslims in Andalusia, they were at least, you know, uh, uh, honest enough to, to own up that they're actually paying the jizya to the Christians. Okay, so jizya they would pay. And so jihad against, against those crusaders of the, uh, uh, of the army of Fernandez was, was, was forbidden. And also the third thing with that was that Al-Ahmar would give up a lot of his land. And the last thing was that Al-Ahmar would, he, would use his Muslim armies, his Moorish armies, in order to attack uh, uh, whatever enemy uh, that Fernandez decided to, uh, whatever place Fernandez decided to attack. And what do you think Fernandez attacked the first? He attacked the Muslims, obviously. Who would he attack? He wouldn't attack the Christians. So the first person he at- attacked after he made this pact with the, with the leader of Ganata was that he attacked Seville, which was a Muslim uh, uh, city at the time, which is in Arabic known as Al Ashbiliya. Ashbiliya was a place that he attacked the first. Ashbiliya was the first place that he attacked. And the armies that actually uh, made, uh, laid a siege to Al-Asbiliya were the Muslim armies uh, led by Al-Ahmar. So Al-Ahmar was attacking his own brothers, his own Muslim brothers, in order to help their Christian friend against his Muslim brother. And he laid a siege for 15 months until Asbiliya gave up and then they went in, they raped the women, they killed the men, they killed children and they... Uh, uh, they uh, they told the people to leave the city. To, they, they told the Muslims who were there to leave the, leave the city. There were four hundred thousand in number. They banished four hundred thousand Muslims, and these Muslims, of course, went went back to to Morocco or basically went back to Maghreb because they had nowhere else to go. Look at this. What is amazing, brothers and sisters in Islam, is not only did Ibn Ahmar attack his own Muslim brothers, but also his army. His army. Yani alay safikum rajulun rashid. Isn't there, a, isn't there a righteous man amongst them? Isn't there a righteous man amongst them? It was his army. How could he attack if his army didn't want to, want, want to attack? But he and his army, all of them attacked. Subhanallah. So not only was he corrupt, but also he was corrupt. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, and he says, uh, uh, Allah, really, Allah does not change the state of a person until they change their own state. So Allah, Allah did not say over here that Allah will not change the situation of, of, the, of the believers or of the Muslims until they change the hukam. No. Allah said until they change themselves. So Wallahi, because they were bad, their hukam was also bad. Because the people were bad, their hukam was also bad. And because we are Muslimin are so low in our iman. And if you look at the umum al-Muslimin, the general Muslimin, that is why our rulers are also the same. You can't expect them to be better. If we were better, then Wallahi, our rulers would be, would be better. But because we are so low in our iman, we have left, left our religion so much, that is why our rulers are also the same. And that is why Ibn Ahmar was no better than the people he was leading. And until uh, Al-Khatib al-Baghdadi, rahimahullah, he mentions in, an, in Tariq al-Baghdad, that the people of Garnata at that time, even though they were the leaders of the world at that time, they had started to imitate the Christians. So the, so the Muslim armies in Garnata, who was led by Ibn Ahmar, they used to wear their armor in the same way the Christians used to wear. The women in, their, in, their, in, in, the, in Garnata used to wear their hair in the same way the Christian women used to wear their hair. And it was truly amazing. People started to resemble the disbelievers little by, li- little by little. And so obviously when you resemble them outwardly, then your inner heart also resembles them. And this is exactly what was happening with the Muslims. When they were outwardly resembling the, the, the kuffar, then truly that, that which was in their heart as well was, was, was resembling that which was with the disbelievers. So we find therefore <coughs> that uh, uh, truly Ibn Ahmar was, a, uh, was a, a, a truly evil man and he took over Aspiliya in the name of the cross and he uh, uh, killed Muslimin and he drove, uh, he killed lots of, lots of Muslims, he killed them and the main mosque, subhanAllah, the main mosque in Aspiliya he, he is the one who erected a cross there. 
he actually erected a cross there in uh, in answer to his crusader masters answering the call of his crusader masters he turned the main mosque in Aspelia into a church and this is Muslimin doing it isn't it well, of course this is enough for, uh, for, for anyone to know that uh, Ibn Ahmad was not a Muslim thereafter uh, uh, one important point that we need to know brothers and sisters in Islam is that Ibn Ahmar the reason why he was doing all of this is that he was too busy to worry about fighting he would rather not fight the crusaders uh, he would rather spend his time building beautiful jannat and beautiful palaces and, and in his time actually Al- 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 Al-Hamra was built as you know Al- Al-Hamra which is the great palace in Garnata <coughs> which is a great palace and an example of magnificent uh, architectural wonder it is truly deserves to be one of the great wonders of the world and it is so beautiful and so great wallahi i have i remember some of our teachers who had gone there and they had uh, uh, pictured it and 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 taken uh, pictures of it wallahi I, te- I saw you know eyes in the eyes of my te- you know tears in the eyes of our teachers and they were crying when they saw how beautiful Garnata was and how stupid and how silly we Muslims were to have actually uh, 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 let such a beautiful prize pass by us. How we could have let such a beautiful prize, which is a Jannah on this earth, pass by us. And at that time it was reported that Ibn al-Ahmar was too busy building uh, uh, gardens. And in, in his time, whilst the Muslims were being attacked, and whilst he was sending his armies in order to help the other uh, disbelievers against other Muslimin, he was busy building libraries, and he was busy building mosques, and he, you know, obviously mosques at that time were not really properly really used as mosques. They were, uh, you know, splendid displays of architectural wonder. He was busy building jannat, as they used to call every garden a jannah, because of how beautiful they were. They were actually dig up canals, dig up rivers, man-made rivers that would flow through the flow through the uh, flow through these jannat in order to beautify it and they would subhanallah make man-made islands inside these these rivers in order to beautify it. can you imagine what he was doing he was busy doing this and in his time he whilst the muslims were being attacked he he built 300 like, uh, like these of these uh, uh, jannat 300 gardens you don't need 300 how many do you need how many do you need will he ever visit them in his life <coughs> And he built 300 whilst the Muslims were in such a state. We come to seven, uh, in the year 671 after Hijrah. And at that time, the king Fernandez III had died and he had given, uh, given his place to Alfonso X. And Alfonso, he was a very, very evil man and he would constantly be- break, the, break the treaties. As you know, the crusaders, as you will notice throughout our, our, our lecture today, you will notice that the Christians always broke their, broke their treaties. They would always constantly break their treaties and the Muslims were, were silly enough uh, to not even realize that they were breaking the treaties and they would make a pact again. And in that pact, they would say, you have to give us X number of land and they would give him. And then again, they would break the treaties and uh, break the treaty in order to make another treaty again. And in this way, continues continues for a number of years until we come to the year 671 in which Alfonso X, he was uh, 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 an, an animal uh, uh, he was an animal in his behavior and he would totally kill everybody and he would openly break the, break the packs without any, uh, without any uh, uh, thought. And he was not political like, like, the, like his predecessor, but he was more rude and hamajiya or, 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 or true ravage, uh, true savage. Ibn Ahmad at that time, he knew that he couldn't last against Alfonso X. And so he sent for an emissary to... Uh, to Morocco at the time, and Morocco was being ruled by this by by the Imam, the great Imam, the great Mujahid, the great hero of Islam, Yaqub ibn Mansur al Marini. Yaqub ibn Mansur, Abi Yusuf, Yaqub ibn Mansur al Marini, and Yaqub ibn Mansur al Marini was Subhanallah, the ulama have described him with with things well, bef- that that truly de- uh, describe how this person was the Baqiyat the Salaf. He was like the uh, remnants of the Salaf. And they used to describe him that he was kathir as sawm He used to fast a lot, and he used to pray a lot, and he was always doing dhikr, and he was extremely kind to the poor, and he used to love the ulama, and he never lost a battle. Any battle that he ever fought, he would always win. Never attack a city, except that he won. He was a khatib, he was an imam, he was a faqih. They would describe him uh, as, as a person who would pray all night and fight all day. He was a mujahid in the morning, and he was a abid at night. Allah. Truly a leader. So when... Yaqub ibn Mansur Marini, when he got a note asking for help from his Muslim brother in Andalus, little does he know that this person is such a big, big traitor and a serpent. Uh, uh, he obviously, 
as every Muslim brother would do, go to his aid. So he uh, organized his army of only 5,000 men and he went off to Spain. So he left Maghrib and he went up and he went up to Spain. When he reached Spain, he had a major war. He called for a major war and he had a major war with the Christians at that time. And the Christians obviously at that time were 90,000 in, in number, whereas he was only 5,000 and, and another 5,000 from the army, uh, armies of Granada. And over there, Yaqub ibn Mansur al-Marini, he had given a beautiful speech, which wallahi I wanted to uh, share with you uh, from his great beauty. However, wallahi I don't think I can do justice to how, how beautiful his speech was. He said, Ala wa inna al-jannata qad ittarab. Uh, or, or is it not that the Jannah has, has come near and the whores and the, and the women of paradise have worn their best dresses they are ready to get married to their, to their husbands and the rivers have started to flow faster for, in anticipation of those people who will drink for it and the, uh, and the, and the tents of paradise and its, and, its pearl, uh, and, and its pearly tents have become open and the Jannah is calling out to you asking you, begging you to come and take its place and will you not answer the call? And so, Wallahi, he gave such a beautiful talk to the people, and the people all decided to uh, hug each other and wear their uh, last clothes in order to, as, as you know, they were all ready to die in the cause of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. It so happened that only 500 or 600 of the Muslims died in their battle. However, most of the Christians died. Of the 90,000 against 10,000, most of the Christians died. Again, subhanAllah. Kam min fi'atin qalilatin. How many small armies have have overcome larger armies bi-ibnillah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, when Umar got a, a, a note of uh, asking for help from his commanders, he used to write back to them, Wallahi, I am not going to send you any madad, I am not going to send you any help. However, I will send you this piece of advice. You will win not because of numbers, but, but Wallahi, you will win because of taqwa. You are your greatest enemy. He used to write, you are your greatest enemy. Your sins are the reasons for your loss, not because of loss of numbers. Wallahi, and this is so true. So true, we find yet again and again in the history of Andalus and the history of, of a Muslim world, how so many few in number would take over large, large quantities of people. Why? Because of the strength of their iman. Because wallahi, they would love to die as we love to live today. And wallahi, subhanAllah, you know, I mean, what can I say, Wallahi, Akhi? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss to describe how we have become so, uh, so useless. As Rasulullah had said, that Wallahi, we will not be less in number. We will be huge. We will be large. Subhanallah, we are so large in number that even a wave that came uh, a couple of days ago, you know, in the tsunami disaster, and even though it wiped out 200,000 people, Wallahi, we still have a large number. We still have such a large number. So we are. Large in number, wallahi, but we are ghutha, ka ghutha is saved. We are like the form of the ocean. And wallahi, Rasulullah could not have found a better description for us. Because we are like this form that even the ocean hits. When you know the ocean hits, and still the form doesn't do anything, and the form only increases in number. And when the shaitan and the enemy hits us, and the enemy hits us, we do nothing. And we are like that form that just increases in number, useless to the ummah, useless to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, useless to ourselves. We can't even defend ourselves to defend anyone else, subhanAllah. <coughs> in the year 673, is the, is the time in which uh, uh, Yaqub the Mansur al-Marini attacked the Christians and he took over and he defeated them. So when he defeated them, he attacked, after that he attacked uh, Seville, which was uh, Asbiliya at that time, he attacked uh, Asbiliya. And it, remember, Asbiliya was the town that Ibn al uh, 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 you know, destroyed, wasn't it? And he helped the Christians take over. So he took over Asbiliya. Thereafter, he, he helped uh, uh, fortify Garnata, and he left Garnata to Ibn al Ahmar and he went back. He left Garnata and he went back, uh, 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 he left Garnata. Uh, and he went back to uh, uh, to uh, Morocco, uh, to uh, Maghrib. Thereafter, uh, in the year uh, 673, uh, Ibn al-Ahmar uh, uh, died. And Ibn al-Ahmar had a son by the name of Muhammad ibn al-Ahmar. And Muhammad ibn al-Ahmar was called the Faqih. <laughs> he was called what? Al-Faqih. He was not faqih at all, wallahi. Rather, he was a jahil, ignorant man. 
he was a jahil, ignorant man. They used to say, Allah, he's kathir al-dhikr, kathir al-tafakkur, but he was kathir al-tafakkur, kathir, you know, a lot of thought, he used to think a lot, and, 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 uh, and uh, you know, remember Allah, Allah, but Allah, he, he would only think about how to uh, uh, be a traitor against his Muslim brothers, as you will see uh, what happened. When, when Yaqub the Masul Marini was becoming so successful, Al-Faqih, this man, he became very jealous. He became what? He became very jealous. So he went to the king of Castile at that time, and he asked the king to help him to attack who? Yaqub the Mansur al-Marini. He, he went to his disbelieving friend, and he asked him, Oh my dear friend, won't you help me attack my so-called brother in Islam? And subhanAllah, the king would gladly help him to attack his Muslim brother. So when, when Yaqub Mansur al-Marini heard about this, he came back in a hurry. And when he came back in a hurry uh, uh, to, uh, to Spain again, obviously he was in Maghrib, he came back in a hurry. When he came back in a hurry and the, and the Muslim armies were there on the battlefield, the Christian army actually ran away. When they saw Yaqub al they never they, they never forgot him. Because only a couple of years ago they had fought him and, they, and Yaqub al had destroyed them. So, Allah, it is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said, Rasulullah had said, Usirtu bil ru'bi masirat al shahr I have been aided with the fear in the hearts of the people, the distance of a month's travel. Even before Yaqub the Mansur al-Marini was, was coming, people were whispering to each other, Yaqub is coming, Yaqub is coming. What is going to happen? And of course, when they saw him, that's it, they went. They would rather save their lives rather than die at the, die at the sword in the, on the battlefield. Obviously, when the Christians ran away, and the Christian king ran away as well, what was left? Al-Faqih was left. And so Al-Faqih started to make excuses. He came to Yaqub the Mansur marini and said, Wallahi, you know, I was pressured into this and that, and Wallahi, you know, started to make excuses. And this great Imam, this great Abid, he forgave him. He forgave Al-Faqih, and not only that, he left all the lands and gave it to Faqih as a gift. And said, just because you have repented as well, all the lands that the Muslim armies from Morocco had conquered, this is for you as well, as a gift. And it's tremendous. The, the karam and the kindness of this man, Yaqub Mansur Marini, was truly tremendous and he, and he left that. We come to the year 685 after Hijrah. At that, uh, in that year, uh, Yaqub Mansur Marini, rahimullah, he died. In the year 685. And he was uh, 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 replaced by his son Yusuf ibn Yaqub, Ibn Mansur al-Marini, Yusuf. This man, Yusuf. Yusuf was not as strong as, as his father. However, he was also, also a righteous man. He was not as, uh, uh, as much as a fighter and a, and a knight like his father, but, but still he was a righteous man. And when Faqih, when Al-Faqih, this guy Al-Faqih, when he saw that Yusuf the Mansur al-Marini had died, what do you think he did? Tell me what do you think he did? He went again to the king of, of, uh, of Castilia. He went to them and said, help me against uh, uh, against the son Yusuf. Subhanallah, he goes back to his old ways. Truly this man hasn't repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He goes back to his old ways. Wallahi, you know when you read about this, it is as if you are reading the biographies of some of our rulers today. It is unbelievable, <coughs> isn't it? It is unbe- un- unbelievable truly how they betrayed their brothers, even though their brothers had, had so kindly forgiven them. Of course, what was the hukum in Islam for, for al-Faqih when he, when he was actually attacking the Muslims with the, and aiding with the Christians? What was the hukum of Islam? Kill, isn't it? The hukum of Islam for such, such a traitor was to be put to death. However, Yaqub the Mansur al Marini, when he had forgiven him, he never thought that he was going to do this uh, thing again. Which silly person does that again except a disbeliever? And so that is what Al Al Faqih did. And he went against Yasu, uh, Yusuf al Marini. And what happened was in, in, in the year uh, uh, 701, uh, Al Faqih died and he was replaced by Al Amash. Uh, his son called Al Amash, and this son Al Amash he aided the Christians in taking over the Straits of Gibraltar. So now the Christians ruled over the Straits of Gibraltar, making sure that therefore the, the help that would come from Maghrib from the bottom would not reach Andalus anymore. Meaning that that would be the end of the help that would ever come from Morocco and, 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 and Maghrib to ever help the Muslims in Spain. As you know, subhanAllah, you know, the, the people of Maghrib had a great hand in making sure the Muslims in Spain were together and they prospered. However, it was when uh, they actually cut off the mother at completely and they fortified their castles against the Muslim help coming from Morocco. Then truly, wallahi, subhanAllah, uh, that was the end of, they had sealed their faith basically. Andalus, their, their, their fate was, was sealed. So we come about 
uh, about 160 years later, we come to the year 871, which is 871, which is about 26 years before the, the end of Andalus, before the end of Andalus. And throughout this time, about 160 years, uh, the Muslims have, was, was still led by very weak, weak rulers, and they were always fighting each other and breaking up. And the reason why the Christians couldn't uh, attack them and take over the Muslims was because the Christians themselves were divided. So all throughout this time, the Christians themselves were divided for 160 years. Yet in the years 871, uh, the queen of, of, uh, of, uh, of, of, the, of the Christians, that Isabel, her name was, of uh, the queen of uh, uh, Castilia, Isabel, and the king of Aragon, they decided to get married. And what's the problem when people get married? There's no problem, is there? But the problem here was that because two kingdoms were coming together, the Christians were not divided anymore, and because they were married now, and they would get married, and then and uh, and, and so the forces of the Christians would be united now against the against the Muslims. And this truly was the end of of Andalus because. Uh, Queen Isabella, he made, she made a promise that she would not sleep with the king, King Aragon, until, uh, until they had taken over the palaces of, 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 of Garnata. And, that you would, they, and they would only sleep together in the palaces of the Muslims. SubhanAllah, this is the promise, this is the oath that she, that she took upon herself. And so obviously the king would want to sleep with his bride. And so he rallies his armies together in order to attack the Muslims. At that time the Muslims were, were being ruled by two sons of, of, of the Khalifa. The Muslims at that time were, were ruled by this person by the name of Al Ghalib Billah. Al Ghalib Billah meaning the person who is who uh, wins. What is a better word for Al Ghalib? Uh, the, the person who wins by the by the by the fortune or the good fortune of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and by another man by the name of Al Dhaqal, and he was his brother. Al Dhaqal. Al Dhaqal basically means uh, a, a courageous person. Obviously, they were never courageous. Any huge titles, mashallah. You know, like we have today in the custodian, etc., and this and that. We have huge titles, but wallahi, they have very, very little meaning, yeah? <laughs> Empty meaning, but they're huge titles, mashallah. And the titles are bigger than the people themselves, subhanAllah. And uh, Al-Ghalib Billah, they, uh, Al-Ghalib Billah and al dhaghal they were fighting each other. And later on, alhamdulillah, they, they agreed to calm down their fighting. However, they decided to break up Granada, which was the biggest city at that time. The, the, the pride of Spain, Muslim Spain at the time, they decided to break it up between themselves. So Al-Ghalib Billah took half of Spain, half of uh, uh, Granada, essentially taking half of Spain with him, half of whatever was left from, from the Muslim Spain at that time, whereas al uh, uh, took over the other half. So what happened was Al-Ghalib Billah, he had a wife and he had a concubine that, uh, that he had. His wife was a Muslim uh, a woman by the name of Aisha, and he had a son with that, with, with Aisha by the name of as sagir And wallahi, he was as sagir He was called as sagir and wallahi, he was sagir As you will see, he is the person who handed over Spain to the Kuffar without even raising a single finger, as you will come to, inshallah. He was truly as sagir Whereas Al-Ghalib Billah, he slept with, uh, obviously he slept with his concubine, and he had a, a son from her. Uh, she, was a, she was a Christian concubine, a Christian woman. And, uh, and she was actually, Ghalib Allah used to write poems about how he was so overtaken by her beauty and, uh, and her, char- her charm. And it was later on found, of course, this, this Christian concubine was sent as a spy and as an uh, infiltrator to try and charm the, the Khalifa into giving over Gurnata to the Christians. So uh, she had a, he, had a, he had a child with this, with this Christian concubine, and, uh, and this child, was, uh, his name was Abu Abdullah, obviously a Muslim. Yeah, and, but yet, obviously, from a Christian concubine, the people would never accept him as the leader over, over Spain. However, uh, the Christian concubine, because she would, she would always, uh, uh, you know, convince him. To, uh, she, she had a, a stronghold on Ghalib Billah, on the, on the Caliph Ghalib Billah. She convinced him to actually put Aisha and her son, al sagir into a, into a, a, a tower. And lock them in the tower, whereas uh, and, and to make her son, which was uh, Abu Abdullah, make him the leader over the Muslims in Garnata. And this is what he did. However, of course, the Muslims never wanted a man who was born of a Christian woman and who did not even accept Islam. A Muslims would never accept such a person as a leader, and so they had a civil revolution. They had a revolution at that time, and until which, uh, after which, they actually got out Asagir and they made Asagir the, the 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 ruler over over Spain. And as Sagir as well, he killed his, he, he, he banished his father, Al-Ghalib Billah, 
and he took over uh, the other part of Garnata which was with uh, ad dagal and so As-Saghi therefore united Garnata before the final handover to the Christians. In the year 19... <clears throat> in the year uh, uh, 896 after Hijrah, the year before Andalus was to fall forever, in, the, in that year the Christians decided to gather their forces and fight fight as Sagir. And as you know, Sagir, he was over Garnata, the last king over Garnata, and he was the one who uh, uh, was, was a final thorn in the throat of the Crusaders. And as Sagir, uh, wallahi, he didn't want to fight them, but then after asking all his counsel, he decided that there was no way out except to fight the Crusaders. At that time, a mujahid by the name of Musa al Ghassan, rahimahullah, he rallied the people, just like Shaykh Hussain Taymiyyah did at the time of when, when the Tatars were, were attacking. SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this man, Musa al Ghassan, to rally the people, and he rallied the people and made them want to fight, 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 uh, fight the Crusaders, and defended off the Crusaders for seven months. For how many months? For six to seven months. Thereafter, the king and queen of uh, uh, the uh, Queen Isabella and her and her husband for Aragon, they sent an emissary to us to us Sagir and said, uh, "We will give you seventy conditions. We will, we will do seventy things for you with the condition that you hand over Granada to us uh, uh, and, and give and give Granada to us." And from these conditions were that we, that we will not harm you, we will not harm your your children, we will not harm your family, and you know things like that, all guaranteeing the king that he was going to be safe, and we will give you X number of uh, uh, wives and concubines, and we'll give you so much money, and this and that, subhanAllah. And this man, as Sagir, he thought that, subhanAllah, this is a good deal. <laughs> he thought that this is a good deal because he didn't, he didn't have faith in, in the Muslim power. He didn't have faith in the fact the Muslims could uh, defend their lands. And so he, he thought that this is a good deal. Let me just sell myself off. But then he made two conditions. And look at these conditions of a coward, the conditions of a coward. He said that the king and the queen have to come and swear by Allah. <laughs> swear by God that these conditions are true. And you know the Christians obviously say, what a stupid condition, you know, as if, we're gonna, as if we care. And so they did it, you know, they, they agreed to this condition. And the second condition is that the Pope has to be uh, our leader in affairs. And that the Pope has to agree to these conditions. And so, you know, the Pope, subhanAllah, how can you take someone, it's like taking, you know, United Nations as our leader, isn't it? Between our affairs. See how it, <laughs> it is happening all the time? He's taking the Pope, subhanAllah, as the guardian in, in case of disputes. If, if, for example, the Christian just doesn't fill up, fulfill one of these conditions, he's going to go to the Pope. <laughs> in that manner, subhanAllah. And this is so amazing. This is, these are the two conditions. When, when uh, 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 the Mujahid Musa al-Nasr, Musa al-Ghassan, when he saw these conditions, he gave a khutbah to the people and told the people, Wallahi, this is an end to your schools, this, this is an end to your mosques, this is an end to Islam in, in Garnata. You must, not, you must not agree, but then the people agreed. And, 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 and as Sagir agreed, of course Musa the Nasr, he had a small band of, of men, he did not agree and he said, Wallahi, I will, I will prefer death rather than, uh, rather than uh, slavery to the, to the Christians. And so obviously he put on his armor and he went out and fought in what we, what we call suicide missions these days. And he went and fought until he died, subhanAllah. And this was with, with, his, death, with, with, with his death, the death of Musa, uh, Musa al-Ghassan, died the Islamic fervor, the, 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 the desire to defend Andalus. And with that, uh, as sagir handed over, he, he went off to the, to the king and queen to hand over the keys of Garnata to them. Whilst... He was passing by the beautiful palaces, whilst he was passing by the beautiful, beautiful palaces of Spain and the beautiful gardens. You know, these are valleys and valleys, not just one, one or two. These are valleys of the most exquisite uh, uh, architecture and most exquisite wonders in the world. And he, when, when he was passing by and he was taking his mother with him, uh, the, the historians narrate that his beard was filled with tears and he was crying. And so his mother told him something very, very important. He told him, you are crying like a woman when you could not defend your city like a man. Saying, A'udhu Billah, yani, what a way to truly describe a coward and a traitor and a person who had absolutely no, no honor and no bravery in his heart. You were crying like a man first of all and you were also uh, were, were, uh, were so small that you could not defend your city like a man. Subhanallah. And this is truly what describes the, the, the fall of Andalus. The reason why we truly let Andalus go was that we cry like women, we forget that we are true men, and because we, could, we cannot defend our cities like true men. Subhanallah. This is truly the reason of, for, the, for the fall of Andalus. That the dunya had, had uh, subhanallah, had filled us up, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, 
وإذا أردنا أن نهلك قرية فأمرنا متر فيها, متر فيها ففسقوا فيها فحق عليه القول فدمرناها تدميرا as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to destroy a nation, then he uh, orders mutrafiha. And mutrafiha, as Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu mentioned, is that we order the people, or we allow the people to, be in, to indulge in luxury, for them to indulge in luxury and matters of this world, such that when they are so delve, you know, dwelling, dwelling in it, and they're immersed in this luxury and love of this world, فَحَقَّ عَلَيْهَا الْقَوْلِ Then because of that we punish them فَدَمَّرْنَاهَا تَدْمِيرًا So we destroy them with a the complete destruction. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an. That truly, wallahi, it is because we have wahan in our heart and, and hope, hope for the dunya. Wahan is the fear of death and, and love for this life. Truly this was the reason why we had lost some of the greatest uh, you know, treasures of this world, the greatest prize that we could ever earn, we have ever earned in this world. And that was... The Andalus that that was Allah uh, I, I urge my brothers and sisters in Islam to think about the history of Andalus and how Subhanallah we were always betrayed. Uh, we always betrayed ourselves. Why we always let ourselves down? Why, Wallahi, you know the, the disbelievers can never beat us because we are always stronger. They can never beat us. It is the enemy inside. It is the enemy inside. We are our greatest enemy, and that is why truly we lost Andalus because we could not control the enemy inside. If we could control the enemy inside, then truly we would win in this life and the hereafter as well.